Welcome to today's 3D print. Let's try this again with the Mega Print episode. The last one turned into an educational video, but I should have made that to begin with. But anyway, CR10 Mini. I already showed you guys in the last video, but let's show it again just in case. Here's the print I got from the CR10 Mini. The rest of my prints, the little sample prints that I did, look just like the prints I get off the CR10. They look fine, they look great. I didn't expect it to be any different. It basically is a CR10. It's just a CR10 with a 200 millimeter um, y axis. That's it. It's a CR10 with a 200 millimeter y axis and a Z shortened to 300. It's a good printer if you don't want to spend the money on a CR10 and you don't have the space for a CR10. Also, the CR10 Mini being a little smaller will be less prone to noise, ringing, ghosting, stuff like that. As you can see, this, this print came out pretty nice. I mean, that's a vase print, but I did have it cranking along pretty good, probably 60 millimeters a second doing that. Okay. And it's good. The noise is pretty good. It, it, I do visibly see slightly less ghosting and ringing than on the CR10, so I attribute that directly to size. The printer is smaller, so it has less inertia and has lower mass, which is going to result in less ringing and ghosting. Um, TiVo Tornado prints came out very nice. Besides the salmoning, which I think I have a bead on, I might be able to fix that. Apparently, I, somebody told me that salmoning happens in deltas when it misses micro steps. So it's doing a smooth arc, and then it misses a step, misses a step. So you see a little line where it was a step that was supposed to be there isn't there, so it just connects the two points. And that gives you that salmon skin effect. So that would appear to jive with the other person who said that the V ref voltage on the stepper drivers is too low and they need to be adjusted to, I think, 0.95 volts, he said. So I'm going to break up my multimeter. I'm going to tear open that box because i got to see what kind of fans are in there so I can buy new fans because my tornado needs to become a dust devil. No more of this as it's printing. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, I was so impressed, like, wow, this printer's quiet. And then the thermistor hit 50C and those turbines kicked on. <laughs> the printer itself is quieter than a CR10, but the fans are a hell of a lot noisier. Um, I suspect that the steppers will become as noisy as a CR10 when I turn up the voltage, meaning I think they turn down the voltage to make them quieter. My suspicion. We'll, I'll confirm that. I also have some TL smoothers coming in, but that would be a big mark against the printer if I had to use that. Even though they're only $8 a piece, if I have to buy hardware to fix your printer, that's bad. But I suspect that once I increase the voltage on the stepper drivers to the correct voltage, that my salmoning will go away. I will make a video confirming or disproving that. But here's a little Marvin. That is a nice Marvin. I have no complaints. There we go. You can just see the little salmoning on the leg there. Not bad, you can't feel it when you touch it. But good Marvin, even the keychain is very nice. Just as nice as the CR10, same. If you held these next to each other, if you didn't notice the salmoning, you couldn't tell one came off the CR10 and one came off the tornado. Benchy. I am pleased. It's a very nice Benchy. Extremely good overhangs, extremely good bridging across the roof there. Teeny tiny bit of stringing, but I believe that is because I was under extruding when I made this. This printer needs a higher extrusion than the CR10. I just used my CR10 profile initially. So um, I have since upped the profile to 1.03 and I think I'm going to make it like 1.05, 1.06. I think it needs a little more. Um, as with most of my vase prints, once it's done the bottom layers, I crank up the um, flow rate to 115 because I want the thicker walls and this came out great. Super, super strong. No problems with strength. Now one thing I did note, the walls, the straight walls of the fins, very nice. Nice and flat, very low noise, good shape. They cooled properly, there's no warping. I want to try printing a mega sized one like I did on the CR10. I suspect I'll have the same kind of warping as on the CR10. I believe that's endemic to the size and since it's using virtually the same hot end and virtually the same cooler as a CR10, um, I suspect I'll get the same results. The new filament. 
this film. This is the this by the way is that Zyro red that was ten ninety nine. As of this morning, they put it on sale for ten ninety nine again. This in the white. This stuff is cool. It's like watermelon. I love this color. <laughs> it's almost a spitting match for the tornado color. Just dumb coincidence. 3D Solutech. Apple green. I love the color. It didn't it wasn't a blow me away color, but it was a cool color because it was a bright green. Then I printed with it. And I like it even better now. <laughs> this this is one of the few filaments that actually looks better printed than unprinted. It actually improves after you print it. When you print it, it takes on a matte finish instead of the shiny finish of the filament and actually looks better. Look at that green. Oh, I love that green. I'm a sucker for cool filament. I love cool filaments, especially when I can get them cheap. To me, half the fun is coming up with a cool new color and doing cool things with it. I, I love different color filaments. So I also did upgrades to the printer. I will have a separate video for that because I'm going to have to take the camera and point it at it because I didn't make extra little parts. I'll, maybe I'll just print some extra parts just to have them so I can show them to you on camera. But I did the fan upgrade. I don't think it needs it. It seems to cool just fine, but this did not fit. Um, this was a little too big and this wasn't quite deep enough so it didn't go into the module enough to line up the holes so I gotta change the scaling on that I didn't make that, someone else made that uh, maybe they got a beta version of the printer and they changed the printer slightly so it doesn't quite line up anymore uh, so I printed out the these didn't work even though they looked more elegant they did not work because they attached like this he said well just use support, no I don't want to use support <laughs> I'm not wasting support for freaking um, leveling knobs. So I printed out the thick ones that somebody else posted. And I actually like the thick ones better. They kind of look like watermelon slices that are green. I should have printed them in red, but I love this apple green. And I also printed the Y tension bracket for the back there, and I also printed the filament guide, which I had to modify to make work. I'll have a video on that. Um, apparently the printer was supposed to come with a spool holder. A printable one. The SD cards were supposed to have a file on it to allow you to print a spool holder that slots right into the aluminum extrusion on the printer. So you would print out this one part with no support, just prints out, and that would become your spool holder. So I am going to download that from the TIBA forums and print that just so I can show it to you guys, but I prefer what I did anyway. I stuck one of my Ender filament holders with some hammer nuts up on the top there. Perfect. I like that better. But I'm still going to print the one that they had just so I can show you guys. Um... I will be doing a upgrades and modifications video on this printer because um, I like what I see so far. But check this out. This is my mechanic wanted one of my Luby's um, sorceress pen holders, and he says he liked the green, so he said print him one in the apple green. This just finished an hour ago. It took 19 hours and 40 minutes. I did it at 0.12 layer height, just because I wanted to make it really, really nice. I want to push the printer a bit. Look at her. God, that green is freaking awesome. Look at the details. Look at the crown. I can't believe it got those points. The only cleanup I had to do was to scrape away the little nubs as it was going back and forth here. Just, to, just took my fingers and scraped them away. You can see a little bit right there. What happens is um, it retracts and then it moves from here to here. And as it's moving, Every now and then you'll see a tiny bit of filament come out. And that filament gets scraped off when it hits over here and starts drawing. And that's that little nodule that you see on there. Otherwise, stunning print. I am really, really impressed with this. I am nothing but blown away by how nice this came out. Look at her face and the crown. I don't think there is a single imperfection anywhere on this print. You know, besides, um, the only parts that it seemed to have trouble with, it seemed to have a lot of trouble with the overhang here. So if you look at that, that overhang is it's not bad, but it's not pretty. Um, same thing over here, had difficulty with the overhang. I'm not sure why I'm going to work on that. That's probably a cooling thing, and this might fix that. Uh, otherwise, this print is phenomenal. This filament is incredible. This stuff is $18 a kilogram. It's so cheap. This is the 3D Solutec Apple Green. Great, great filament. This is printed at 200 degrees Celsius. I love it. I am going to buy another roll of this. I'm going to print stuff with this. I love 
this green filament. It is beautiful. Another project I'm working on. The moon. I have to have a moon. And of course, my, my enders get upset if I don't feed them first. So I fed it to the ender first. And it did not like printing the bottom. That is bad. <laughs> okay, so I cannot print the bottom half of spheres. But I let it print anyway because I want to see where else it would fail. It printed the top half just fine. Now this is no support. Um, and this is uh, just a little bit of a brim. And this is no infill. This is empty. It's four perimeters and it's hollow. Um, can I show that somehow? I don't think there's an easy way for me to show that. I can try. Let's see if it lights up. Nah. You're not going to see it. Yeah, it's too thick. I didn't think of that. It might actually be too thick to make it as a light cover. Because you know, I wanted to make a light cover out of this. But it, four perimeters is um, 1.6 millimeters thick. And that might be too thick to be a good cover. So I printed it in two halves. That's what you see here. So here is the two halves of the moon. That is interesting. I noticed that there's almost no craters in the bottom of the moon. How interesting is that? The top of the moon? Plastered. It got peppered. So I will glue the two halves together to make my complete moon. How cool is that? Now once I get the CR10S4 queued up, I have a 400 millimeter version of this already cut in G-code using the same settings as this. Now I'm going to try to spit out of the S4 once I get that set up. So that's going to be cool. Um, I believe that's it for now. No other killer prints ready. Those are the prints I've made so far. The moon is cool. I'm going to have fun with that. I love the sorceress. That is beautiful. The CR10 Mini made the second nicest um, vase I ever made. Of course, the best one I ever made is that bronze colored one on the CR10, the 400 millimeter tall one. That's amazing. But this is number two. That's very cool. That is using the Esun PLA Pro Blue. This is the Zyro Red. My beautiful little baby doll here. She is in the 3D Sciatech Apple Green. And what did I use this? This is Polymaker Polylite White. It's actually pretty cool. That's also the filament that I use to make these parts. It's a very stiff filament. It has a matte type finish. And it's a smooth finish. I like the finish of the, of the plastic. It's, it's nice. It's, um, I don't know how to describe it. It almost feels kind of like foam type of texture, sort of. It's hard to describe, but um, it's got a very nice finish to it. It doesn't have that slick finish. Smooth finish, but not slick like your typical PLA. And it's got that really nice, professional, matte white, pure white color to it. So I'm probably going to buy some more of that. I like the I like the Polymaker Polylight. Um, I believe these were using that um, Rep Rap Guru, Rep Rap Guru, that ten dollar deal I posted before the Sunlu deal. That was this. This is more parts for this robot lawnmower the guy never picked up. I'm glad I didn't print anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna have fun. This is neat. I will see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.